Hello, hello, everybody. It's uh, another week of Open Shutter. We've got Paul and Andre here so far. I know uh, Salarm messaged and said he won't be joining us this week. He's stuck in traffic again. Uh, a lot of traffic in Texas, I guess. Yeah. So we're just waiting on Evans. He may join us. I don't know. He may not because he, he might be in the cameras. The last so, yeah. Oh, there he is. He must oh, have more cameras. So I can add him in here. Evans is here. Look at that. Oh, was he using the black bag? Okay, I'll be back. Cause... <laughs> yeah, no worries. No worries. We're Not just sure doing intros to anyway. Today. <laughs> All right. Well, while you figure out your end, we'll uh, we'll start with some intros here. Uh, my name is Brian McGowan. I am Brampton, Ontario-based photographer, videographer. Just uh, do my thing, and uh, we're going to talk about sunrise and sunset today, and have some fun with that. And uh, towards the end of the show, we're also going to discuss the five dollar dollar store challenge that we're going to be issuing uh, to the to the participants in the show and to people who follow us on IG, on YouTube. It's going to be open to everybody. And, uh, we're hoping to have a prize to give out as well. Uh, nice. Not to anyone in the show, but... Well, that was, <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, for one of you lucky members of our community who chooses to participate, there'll be something for you. Uh, but yeah, yeah, $5 dollar store challenge. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go talk to that guy over there, Paul, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for jumping on, spending some time with us another Wednesday evening, the first Wednesday of August already. And um, yeah, this is your first time on the show. There's usually five guys up here. So um, Evans that just came on, he'll be back hopefully in a second. And uh, we also have someone from Texas uh, who's currently teaching, teaching what, high school kids? So uh, it's grade seven, eight, I think middle school. Okay, so we, 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 mean, yeah. we may never see him again. So um, <laughs> thanks for jumping on and um, yeah, what can I say? Um, I'm sure Brian put all of our channel links in the description. So if you haven't checked our channels out, please do, because we all do the same stuff, but we all do different stuff too. I'm kind of all, all over the place, documentaries, vlogs, uh, I don't know, small business commercials, whatever you want to talk about. Bonus treat, if you want to see more of us, I'm dropping a vlog right after the show where Mr. McGowan and Mr. Andre are in it, and uh, if you like ice cream, you're gonna like this video. Trust me. So that's all. That's all I'm gonna. That's that's, that's my teaser. That that ice cream looked good. There. That's that's all I'm gonna say. I'm is that still, ice cream looked good? I'm still. I still have it in my mouth. Anyway. <laughs> what, Andre, what's up, everybody? Uh, Andre here uh, from uh, Brampton, uh, photographer, videographer. I love to do the. The more crazy stuff like seal wool, light painting, and all that yeah, fun stuff. Uh, I do shoot everything else from weddings to portraits as well. But yeah, the really creative stuff, that's where my passion is, and I love doing it. And uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Shameless plug. I will be dropping a video tomorrow night. I know it's been a while. For me, I finally it works for you. I've been slacking off, and I don't know. Just lots of other. Hi, you. It's not you. It's Adobe. Wow. It's you, it's Adobe. Right? That was part of the problem, but I won't get so, into that. But. So now that Andre has guaranteed the apocalypse is going to happen. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right. All right, that's fine. Hey, Pat. Hey. There are lots of people in the oh, chat. Wow, tonight. geez, what's going on? Like, Patricia's in the chat. Is there, like, is there like nothing going on tonight? <laughs> people are just jumping on this. <laughs> so I appreciate everybody watching. That's fantastic. And so I think I think they all came for the for the uh, five dollar challenge thing. Yeah, they're all for the five dollar challenge. Nobody cares about sunrise or sunset. Everybody shoots it like crazy though. So yeah, tonight we're going to talk about sunrise and sunset photography. Uh, some of the apps you can use to help you out uh, in planning a sunrise or sunset shot, uh, so that you know what direction to turn. And, uh, <laughs> Important. Because the big the big ball in the sky doesn't give it away enough half the time, but. No. Yeah, no, there are apps oh. that can help you plan your shoot, and uh, there are yeah. lots of different ways that you can shoot a sunrise or sunset. Yeah. So, um, with that said, if uh, oh, Kevin's saying what challenge, oh, uh, we're we going to be talking about wait. it later in the show, Kevin. Yeah, wait, you got to wait the whole hour, man. Yeah, you got to so. you got to stay tuned for the whole hour to find out about the challenge, and then it'll be That's posted on Instagram through. tomorrow anyway. So, <laughs> we need, don't we tell need, anybody. We need the watch time. It's a secret. We need the watch time, man. 
there you go. I'm excited. <laughs> so yeah, we've uh, the three of us have gone out together to shoot sunrises and sunsets. Yeah. So, uh, Paul, why don't you tell us about oh. some of your favorite sunset things? Uh, okay, sure. Um, let me queue up a photo first, and then um, see. Okay, I'm going to show you. I think I've shown this before or somewhere else, but I'll show you probably the best sunset photo I've ever taken. I'm pretty sure I've shown this before on the show, but um, I think it's really all comes down to like timing because you just don't know what the sky is going to do. And when the sky goes on fire, you need to be ready. Yeah, it's very um, much a right place, right time thing. And mm -hmm. this That's photo cool. that I'm going to show you was exactly that. Do you have the screen, Brian? I do. I'll pop it up here. Oh, look at that. So nice. this is in Oakville, right by the harbor. Very nice. And um, I was actually on the bridge there in the background, like just before like the sun came down. As I, as I was walking along the bridge, I noticed like the clouds and the light just basically coming alive. So I had to run with my tripod <laughs> all the way from the bridge, coming on down all the way down to the harbor here because I wanted to get the reflections of the trees and the boats and just got lucky, right? So, you know, it comes down to timing and just being aware of like what's happening and not also falling in love with um, one spot because you can always move around and try to get different perspectives and different angles, mm -hmm. which I think I can, we'll have to stop the share. Hang on, let me show you another yep. one. Yeah, queue up another one, sure. And then, so. So yeah, well, Paul's queuing that up. You can basically, you can do all the planning in the world, mm -hmm. line up everything, show up to your location, and nothing yeah. happens yeah. or you can just be out for a casual walk and all of a sudden the greatest yeah. sunset you've ever seen happens and, so that's, that's just a, yeah. and that was that day and this is the this is the other one so i like that too i kind of i kind of nice. like kick myself because i got the i cut off the lady in the red the boat there at the bottom left i cut it off i wasn't really paying too much time this is like way back in like 2017 like i'm just like around with the camera so <laughs> but i don't think i don't think i've ever had a sunset like this ever again so when it happens you need, you need to take advantage even if you just have your cell phone just snap yeah. it yeah because even cell phones take raws like take raw files yeah so you know, even if it's not a raw just get getting just, the shot is more important than anything yeah just get it right so um hey jack hey jack hello so What's that's the first tip is just to um timing like life is everything mm -hmm. uh, evans I faded out again i think evans is having some trouble again uh, uh -oh. i think so oh there he is again there he is he's back i'm uh, here sorry guys all right okay. Woo you made it yeah i uh i had to go to the office today for a long while uh -oh. and then i had to pass by henry to drop off my a73 for repress <laughs> I well, want to hear this story. So, oh, so do you want to give us a, a quick intro, Evans? Because everybody else is giving an intro. Oh, so quick yeah. Intro. Sorry, guys. Sorry I, uh, I was late. Um, trying to get used to using a Canon and all the <laughs> stuff not to display all the info on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Um, my name is Evans. I'm based in Brampton, Ontario. I'm a weddings and events photographer primarily. Um, you know, been shooting for a couple of years now. I love sunsets, especially my favorite part of sunsets is um, long exposures, right? Um, Paul and the guys will tell you, whenever I'm out for sunset shoes, I have my ND filters, at least a 10 stop, because I like to do really long exposures and see yeah. what I can get um, during sunset and also during the blue hour, right after sunset. So it's going to be a fun show. We are going to share and learn. Yes, sir. That's my pitch. <laughs> All right. So, so on the planning side, uh, are there any apps or websites that you guys use regularly to plan? Uh, one of my favorites is uh, the photographers. I am probably saying this wrong. Emphoris. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. If you, I don't know if you can actually uh, free. Is it free? You got to pay for that. No, this is a paid app. Mm -hmm. um, How much? I think I paid it's a ten more bucks. Expensive one. Yeah. I think it's I think I pay like ten bucks. But for me, I go out all the time and it's so worth it. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna focus on that. Come that on. one gives you the moon too, right? 
Yeah. So oh, basically, go. that pin is where you would be standing. And then you have the orange and blue lines. So that's basically, it's hard to do here, but uh, this side <laughs> is the sunrise where the sun's going to come up. And then, then you have the sunset. Yeah. Is that so basically with this you can actually see where the sun's gonna be coming up. It's great mm. for placing yourself in the right Jeez. position like for a building or a barn or that hay bale or whatever else you're looking for. You know about where you have to be. Yeah. I use it all the time, so for for me it's it's an invaluable tool plus it tells you if you actually go on here it tells you exactly what time sunrise sunset is so you know exactly when you have to be at your spot and always also be blue hour. early also blue hour and open hour yeah for for anyone who's not using an app uh there is a website it's called sun calc and i've popped yep. it up on the screen here now and uh close the ad here but basically this is the same kind of idea yep. you get your sunrise time your sunset time and you can drag it can basically you, anywhere in the world can you put it in like an exact location like say you want to do like front street union station or something or can you uh, right street? here so here yeah. where i've highlighted you can add an address yeah any any address you want or you can just just zoom yeah. right in zoom right in and see. see and it looks like we're getting close to toronto henge soon for the morning nice mm. good old toronto henge that has the days get shorter so so yeah this is just this is a free website just suncalc.org and oh. you can drop drop down anywhere in the world so if you're traveling and you can access this on your device as well. And I believe there is an app for Android, but not for really? iPhone called okay. SunCalc. Really? Yes. Strange. So, I, so anyway, that's yeah, uh, it's a just another planning tool that you can use. Now, that's, um, that's pretty cool. Um, Evans, you mentioned there, long exposures too, right? Yeah. There is an app that I've been using for a while, but I, I can't, I think I changed my phone and I haven't installed it back. But there's an app okay. on the Android, which is also free. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's called the Photographer's Companion. Um, the only thing I don't like about it, now looking at the one that Andrea just showed, I think that's a better one because of the fact that it shows you where to position yourself. This app I have doesn't show you where to position yourself, but okay. then it tells you sunset, um, you know, what sunrise, sunset, um, as well as blue hour, nautical hours, that kind of stuff. So you know when to get out and shoot, but it doesn't show you the position of the sun or which way the sun is going to rise from it, stuff like that. Ah. Okay, hmm. so... One other thing, when you when the sunset says it's eight eight o'clock, just don't pack up and go home. <laughs> Wait about a half an hour. Yeah. After the actual sunrise, when the sun's below, because sometimes that's when the magic happens. Uh, just because of the way the weather is, uh, the humidity, all these different factors, sometimes you get better color after the sun's actually below the horizon. Yep. So. And the same Wait. thing with sunrise. Get there. Thing. Yep. Forty-five minutes early. Wait That's there. Right. And <laughs> yeah, and I, I'll sunrise. share some shots soon. But um, I, my style of shooting, um, most of my long exposure shots, I actually do after sunset, which would be like the blue hour uh, kind of thing. I do shoot sunsets during the golden hour times, uh, but I also like to shoot blue hour, which is maybe a few. Um, a few minutes to an hour after sunset, you also get some good lighting at that time as well. So it's not just I'm going off for sunset and I'm taking off once the sun is set. You can wait and get a lot more beautiful light even after sunset. 100%. Okay, so um, seeing as Evans already mentioned that he likes to do long exposures, 
why don't we uh, discuss those first? And for anyone who doesn't know what a long exposure is, Evans, why don't you explain what a long exposure shot is? Um, so when we talk about long exposures, we're talking about exposures where your shutter is open for a longer period of time. Uh, for most of the stuff where we're doing handheld and we're shooting around, we want to keep our shutter fast. Mm -hmm. um, but when you do a longer exposure, which is your shutter speed is open for a longer period of time, as you can see in the example that Brian is showing, you end up with an image where you capture both frozen items as well as um, movement, right? So your image seems to as if they are, they are, they've come to life. You see some movement in the shot. So if in the example on the screen, if you look at the water, right, you can see that the whole water is smoothed out. You can see the sky mm -hmm. is kind of smoothed out. But at the end of the day, the, the bridge or the pier is still sharp enough, right? Because that pier is not moving, but the water and the clouds are moving. And so by having that longer exposure time, you mm -hmm. capture that motion together with the stuff that are not moving. It, it gives mm -hmm. that sense of a depth and as well as motion as well. And I think it's, it's very beautiful if you use it the right way. In terms of how long to keep your exposure open, it depends on what you're trying to capture. There have been times where I have captured 30 seconds, 4 minutes, 5 minutes exposures. Um, this is about two it, minutes. On that's this. about yeah, and yeah, yeah, that's about two minutes, which is pretty good. Um, but one nice. thing that you need to know if you're going to learn uh, to do long exposures is that most cameras, once you hit thirty seconds, you can't um, go automatically in terms of the shutter speed, right? So you're going to have to switch into what is called bulb mode. And if you're going to do that a lot, then my recommendation would be get something like. Uh, a shutter release cable or even your phone's app sometimes the canons and the canon and the sony's they have an app that allows you to remotely trigger your shutter and use that to time your bulb mode kind of thing so it's for me i love long exposures because they tell a different story from all the handheld shots uh, especially for something like this where you have the clouds and the water moving when water is shot maybe two to one to two seconds and you shoot water and water falls that way the motion in that image tells a better story for me than when you shoot at a higher um, shutter speed and freeze the water motion mm -hmm. just yeah. just to give a comparison i'm flashing up here this is the same sunrise but a handheld shot of, of the sky basically so mm -hmm. you've got two options you can capture that or you can capture that it's basically the same sunrise a couple of minutes later. Uh, I caught this one earlier, wrong way, than this one. But that's basically two different styles of photo from the same sunrise. Keep moving. Oh, somebody shared something here. There we go. Andre Whoa, shared yeah. one. Wait, uh, that's what's, volcano? Uh, yeah, that's what's like. <laughs> take a beach, uh, two and a half Jeez. seconds. Uh, Holy, man. That wow. sky just... <laughs> Just popped that nice. night. Guys blew oh. up on you. <laughs> yeah. So the sun is actually below the horizon, but it just it the conditions were right, and it just gave us that funky, wild color. So yeah, it's like a painting. Yeah. Kevin that's sent what, us some photos too. Yeah. Right. Throw, throw them up. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna assume I'm gonna assume they're drone. Uh, yes, Kevin's are drone. <laughs> so that's so the other thing is Andre and I and Kevin all know that you can get some very unique shots from a drone for a sunset. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. So I'm just going to pop uh, because Kevin was nice enough to send some in. I'll pop them Thanks, on Kevin. the screen here. Go and jump on the show with them. That's feel free to do so. There we go. Oh, yeah. So we've got that one, obviously. Jeez. Like that Ferris wheel, they're just hanging out. Oh, that's a nice pier. I like that. Nah, nah. That's not 50 point. No. No. <laughs> I wish. I that's wish. what 50 point once was. Yeah. I wish. That's nice panel. Like that too. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. That, that DJI lens flare there. I know yeah. that. <laughs> I've seen that lens flare way too many times. Yeah, that's so <laughs> notorious. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one with the sun in the yeah, building there. Cool. I really like that. Pretty that's cool. nice. Yeah. So yeah, that's another thing that's you can kind of... do is use a drone to get a, a very unique 
look at your sunset or sunrise. Oh yeah. So what do you guys prefer? Do you guys prefer to get up early or stay out late? Dep depends on the time of year. Stay up late. Yeah, for, for me, I like to stay up late. Um, just because I'm usually really busy early in the mornings. <laughs> Is it I'm going to work or I have something to do in the mornings? But yeah. in the evenings, I can go out, hang out until whenever time it is, right? So I like to do sunsets rather because, especially in the summer times when we have uh, longer days, um, I can go to work, come back home, get my kids to sleep, and <laughs> head out for sunset because sunset is maybe around 9 30, 10 o'clock p.m. Uh, it works better for me during sun, sun sunset. Yeah, totally. I like I like I I agree. I like sunrise because it's it's a good way to start the day because it's very relaxing. So this oh, is geez. a drone shot. So uh, yeah. Oh, you got a little close on that one. Nice. Yeah, I know. I, I got a little close, but it's it's just unique. You know, you had I I framed up the sun with the hook on the crane, <laughs> yep. so. Uh, this is something a little different. Jeez. I can't jump yeah. that high, so. Caption that photo real quick, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of a caption. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Fresh needle? I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to think of one. Because it's begging for a good caption, that's why. Yeah, I know. But that's what good you can photo. do with the drone. You can position the drone behind things and, uh, you know, Get some cool placements. Mm. No, so. no, like okay. And you're and you're and you're allowed to fly that close to that thing. Uh, technically, no. Okay. <laughs> I know that, but it's over a construction site, and if I actually crash my drone, that's my fault, and I'm taking responsibility. So uh, nobody was there. This is after hours, so yeah, no risk to anybody. So. There you worth go. it. Worth it. Yeah, so think of a caption. If anyone, can, if anyone can think of a caption for that photo, put it in the chat. Cause <laughs> put it in the chat. Really good. It up. Yeah, we have a little contest for best caption winner. Prizes no Andre's prizes. drone. The prizes Andre's drone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Take you for a fly. <laughs> shout out, shout out to our sponsor DJI. You know. All right. So for sunset shots, do you guys prefer, or sunrise, I guess both kind of the yeah. same here. Do you prefer a nice wide landscape shot? Do you prefer to focus on details? Yeah. I like See, that's, I like that's trying to get something different because um, let me try to find some examples first of all. I, I love to do uh, wider angles. Um, yeah. Because usually when I'm doing sunset shots, unless I'm doing a portrait session at sunset, mm -hmm. um, I'm really trying to capture landscape. Um, I want to have more of the sky. And usually I do my long exposures where I have re water. Right? So in that way, I like to show more of the environment. Even if I have a person in there, I like to do more of an environmental portrait instead of, you know, just going so tight on the person because i want to show the environment i want to show more of that beautiful sunset behind the person uh so I, I like to do that but usually if i have a person in it yes i might want to show a large uh, environment but i don't go uh pretty wide with that i would probably start somewhere around uh, a 24 millimeter uh but if there's no person in it i'm probably put it on my you know tamron 17 to 28 and i'm usually at 17 wide wider hmm. so this is um a detail shot of some flowers uh, ver the, the complete opposite of what evans was just talking about <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a much tighter shot yeah and uh we've got another more of a detail kind of shot here i yeah. i personally I mix between the wide and detail. I really love doing the detail, but I'm going to do them as creative as I can. Like, so this is just some flower out in the country. I'm down there on my hands and knees and just positioning that, uh, that camera right to make it look like that flower is cradling the sun. So um, I love doing, 
shots like this, I don't know. Uh, I could shoot this all day, but nice one, man. that's just me. Yeah, I, th I think so. It's, it's all it's all about your creative style, right? Um, yep. These images work; they're beautiful. Um, I I like to mix and match, uh, but I I'm a kind of portrait and a wedding guy, right? So when I look at the sunset. Um, the only time I go out, I well, actually I started shooting sunsets and sunrise because of get out and shoot. <laughs> but um, the idea from my weddings and and that stuff all applies, right? So um, I just come in there, I know what settings to play around with, but it wasn't my kind of thing. But going out with get out and shoot forces me to kind of branch out of my regular portrait stuff and then shoot stuff. So when I go out like that, I prefer to shoot more wider because those are my only opportunity to shoot landscapes and stuff like that. Uh, I prefer to shoot wider, but shooting in tight as well with the sunset behind it also is beautiful, right? It's all about creative preferences and what works for you in that moment. There's a portrait sunset here. Yeah. Paul's got one here. So that's Paul Scottsdale. Yeah, that's Scottsdale. That's just an example of portraits. So let's pop Paul up on the screen here. And uh, to answer your question, Jerry, I it all depends on what I'm trying to do for a shot. Sometimes I want a wider, sometimes I want tighter. Most of the time on my camera these days is a 16 millimeter. So that, that's my go-to right now. But I've used my 100 to 400. I'll show one of those shots later. Yeah. That's, it just really depends on, on the overall look you're trying to achieve. But for a yeah. wide scene, I like my 16 mil f1.4 yeah. lens. Don't don't mm. limit yourself to just one lens. Uh... Yeah, there's yeah. lots. <laughs> With any know, lens you have, any lens you have, you can shoot a su sunrise or sunset, yeah. depending on what you're trying to yeah. achieve. I've used everything from my wide to the telephoto, 50 mil, uh, just depending on what I feel like getting that day. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, to me, it's like, you know, if you're, if you're shooting like land, like city skylines that are overshot, you know, like this entire, I just try to get something different. So I try to get like a silhouette. You try to get a contrast between like kind of like the CN Tower is silhouetted, but the bottom of the frame is kind of like lit up. So it has the kind of like the balance between day and night. So just try to look for stuff like that where you can um, stand out a little bit instead of just sitting like a kind of like a blanket wide city skyline shot that's been shot like a million times. I'm sure this shot's been shot a million times too, but at least you have something different in your own portfolio too. Yeah, no, sil silhouettes are another thing that work really well for uh, sunrise mm -hmm. and sunset yeah. and um, looking here uh, just while we're on the topic of silhouettes I see you put one up there Evans too so I'll get to yours in a second uh, yep. here's a silhouette shot yeah we'll say a beach yeah, again exactly. my yeah, mom exactly. my daughter and son so oh, they were having fun in the water so I just took a shot and <laughs> silhouetted it out so that? great silhouette shot and was this and was this candid or was did you tell them to do this no, oh, they didn't know I was doing it, so uh, <laughs> so nice. it was very candid. Nice. Yeah, those yeah. silhouettes cool, always huh? work well. Yeah, um, I like silhouettes. Pop Evans with the portrait shot up here. <laughs> yep. Um, sunset portrait out at uh, my favorite sunset sunset spot. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know that. Um, oh, oh, we're not naming it though. <laughs> yeah, I'm not naming it. I'm not naming it. <laughs> but that's my favorite sunset sunset spot. Um, you know, beautiful place. Um, this this is off camera flash, uh, but most of the time when I do off camera flash, my goal is to make sure that it doesn't look too flashy in certain instances like this. So as you can see. Um, exposing for the sunset, adding a little bit more fill flash on the more on the on the subject, um, you know, that kind of stuff. CTO gel on that or no? Um, yeah, this one had a CTO gel because I was using yeah, the eighty two hundred. Because I like to use a CTO gel because yep. otherwise, then you you see the the subject is blue, has a blue color tone whilst yep. the sunset is kind of has that orangey thing and it throws the image off 
Um, yep. So, so for those that don't know, CTO is color temperature orange. Uh, it's a colored gel you can put on your flash, and it just because sunset gives a warm glow to everything, the light from your flash isn't as warm. So it just warms up the light on your flash to match the ambient warmth. Yep. Um, you you can either use a, an orange gel to to even out the lighting, or you can change your white balance to a warmer white balance and use a blue gel to neutralize the color. So you can play opposites as well. It all depends on the effect you want to achieve with the flash. But a lot of the time you want to make sure you do this matching, get that warm light on, yeah. on the subject yeah. as well as everything mm -hmm. else in the scene. Yep, I, I can show you guys an example where I didn't use a CTO and then you can see the difference. Um, I don't like it. I like, I prefer to use the CTO gels because if you don't, I don't like the portrait is okay, but I, I just don't like the colors, especially on the, uh, on the model. Right. Um, let me see. Well, this one wasn't so bad, but that's the only one I have queued right now. That's okay. Uh, let's show this one. Yeah, pop it up and I'll share it. Um, so in this one, the colors I didn't like so much, but even on the model's face, right? I had to paint in a little bit of um, uh, a photo filter to kind of warm up her face a little bit more. It still looks the cool. Blue light. It yeah. still looks cool, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You can tell, but I like to put the CTO gel on it, especially at sunset. Mm -hmm. Um, and that makes your image stand out a lot better. Yeah, it's, it, you either have to match it or very deliberately look like yeah. you're not trying to match it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it, it's either got to be close to the same color temperature, if not the same, or it's got to be so different that it looks deliberate. Yeah, Anything right. else, and it looks like you just screwed up. You just screwed up, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it can, and it can be a creative choice. You can do a warmer white balance and cool off your model and it can look really good, but you have to do it very deliberately and it has to suit the scene. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Whilst we're still talking about the topic, I uh, just remember, forgot to tell you guys, if you are looking into doing long exposures, it's important you invest in a good ND filter, guys. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, cheap ND filters can add a, a color cast to your images yeah. that can be very hard to remove in post. Yeah. Um, we, we've all played with those and cringed. And yep. Yeah. Delete, spending, delete, spending, delete. Spending money on good filters, unless you plan on converting all your sunrises and sunsets to a black and white image because of the color. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, then why, why get out of bed early if you're just going to convert it to black and white sure. and lose all that color anyway? Yeah. No, what, no, what, no, are, just... what, are, what are some good filters? Uh, I use K and N yeah. or K and KNF. F concepts. Yeah. Yeah. K and F concept. Uh, mm -hmm. Tiffin does some good ones. Yeah. If, if you are, sh um, if you want to go on a budget, the K and F's, uh, so far, I would say the best budget options out there. Definitely. If you have the money to spend, look at the Tiffins. Um, yep. and, and the other ones, I forgot, pull up B and W and a few yeah. others, but yeah, they get there, pretty pricey. Yeah. They the pretty Peter pricey. McKinnon filters. If, if you want to do a Peter McKinnon filter. Oh, you mentioned them. He doesn't need <laughs> our plug. So. He's on the show next week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to ask him then. We need some, uh, samples. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah exactly. So one thing that I also like to do um, at sunset or sunrise um, is is I, I don't know I know you guys are in the comment most of you are photographers and you stick for your photos, but I'm I love my video side as much as I love the photo side. So whenever I'm out shooting sunset, one thing that I like to do is time lapses. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I've I've got oh, a yeah. huge collection of time lapses. Too. Time lapses are beautiful at sunset. Yeah. If you have some motion in there, especially. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. And, uh, just to, to bounce back here, I know we're bouncing around a little bit, but uh, the guys earlier mentioned to stay late. 
Yeah. Past past the time really, the sun really. goes down. Yes. Mm. Brampton go. Brampton go. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Gift that keeps on giving. But that's <laughs> what time is this? When, that's probably half an hour after the sun went down. Yeah. Nice. And just stick your camera in a puddle. Shout out to the and puddle. Yes, I stick my camera in puddles. Shout out to the You're puddle. not gonna kill it. <laughs> Unless it's a really funny. deep puddle. But uh, if it's not oh. a deep puddle, it's fine. You only need like, like a angle. millimeter of water to get this. Yeah. So that's uh, just yeah, you get that nice glow in the sky still from the sun going down. And when you add a puddle to reflect it, it just mm. so stay out. Stay out that extra bit of time. Stay up past your bedtime. Yeah. Cost, cost or or get up way too early. Way too I early. Shot, I haven't shot a single sunrise this summer. Really? I'm just, too, I'm just too lazy. I shot one. I shot one. I got out of bed at like four o'clock in the morning and I used yeah. one photo yeah. from that shoot. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the thing. We got well, Paul yeah, sharing we, we, something here. Yeah, so this is Sunset Financial District in Toronto. And, you know, you just need to, I always say this, but you just need to like look up because, you know, you can get scenes like that where. For me, like whenever I shoot architecture, I like kind of like getting detail. I don't like shooting the entire building. So I just like to get something a little bit abstract. And when you get the cool light hitting the building, you get you get a pretty cool shot. You have like the reflection of the other building on the left side of the frame there. And it kind of works for like symmetry and patterns and all that fun stuff. Yep. So, um, you know, a little tip when you want to shoot architecture, shoot it at sunrise or at sunset because you just get the light hitting the building and it just sells a little bit more. Something like that too, right? There's yeah, another just, one. A uh, little bit of. Uh, sorry? If you're following the Open Shutter Instagram, you see a similar shot to that. Mm -hmm. This is and the this old one. building because this, this, uh, this is the old church. It actually burnt down mm -hmm. and they built a replacement one. And the, um, the one. The one on our Open Shutter IG is the replacement one yeah. that I shot recently, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and one tip, try increasing your shutter speed a bit because that will bring out the oranges in the sky without actually having to Photoshop stuff. Mm. So if you're at, let's say, 1 800th, bump it up to 1 1200th, 1 1600th of a second and try it out. You'll actually see your image getting uh, oranger. Because if you leave the shutter open too long, you're letting too much light in and it gets too bright and you lose a yeah. lot of that. So one quick tip, try that and let me know. <laughs> Message on me directly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I've been shooting sunsets for so long that I've tried so many different things and, uh, I, I shot a lot. Uh, yeah. How many sunrise shots have you taken, you think? Oh, Over God. Thousand? I bet I've done more sunrise. He Brian says, yeah. Brian's done more sunrise, but I've done more sunsets. Uh, mm. Nice. Oh, is this at 50 or rat rate? No, that's at that Shell Park, actually. Wow. That's that's the 4 a.m. wake up to get to Shell oh, Park. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I got absolutely good. soaked by that wave crashing over the rocks. <laughs> You're like, I'm getting this photo that's going to break me. That's it. I got the shot. And then, and then you left. Then I left pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Go home. See ya. Nope. Where's, where's my coffee? <laughs> but then uh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin sent a couple more photos. Yeah, Kevin sent some more. So I'm going to pop Kevin's up here. I just They're have to find drone shots. There we go. Black and white drone shots. There we go. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Nice one. This is not poor credit. No. It's a little bit nicer than poor credit. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So Kevin says that's that's merging exposures too. So that, that's another thing that we can talk about is actually bracketing your exposure. Yeah. Uh, so you basically take three to five shots, sometimes seven, depending. But usually three to five is enough for most people. And you can merge them uh, through Lightroom into uh, basically an HDR shot, or you can do.
do what I like to do, which is luminosity masking. And uh, that's a little more labor intensive through Photoshop. And it just gives you Ooh. gives you an HDR look with a lot more control over mm -hmm. than a Lightroom HDR. So the mm -hmm. Lightroom HDR is perfectly fine. As you can see by this image from Kevin, it looks great. Mm -hmm. But the, um, the luminosity masking just is a way to have full control over how much of each layer comes through and right it, but it takes a lot more day. work too we do a live edit one day brian we'll live edit one day masking, masking, live edit. oh god <laughs> got a couple hours a hour. <laughs> oh, it would take a full hour yeah but be riveting though yeah um, well, the other trick also um uh, to add on to the luminosity the mask and, and the uh, bracketing uh, oh, and by the way, the bracket, and sometimes if some cameras will also allow you to automatically bracket, right? So you just set the number of shots you need in camera, press down the shutter, and it will do that brackets for you. You still have to merge it, though, in post. Um, the other trick that I like to do, especially when I don't have, um, and I think, <laughs> Paul, the last time we were out shooting Sunset, somebody had requested a video on this, and I haven't had the time to do it. But one of these days, I'll probably record that video, which is um, you don't have an ND filter, but you want to do a long exposure. Mm, right? Yes. Uh, if I want to do maybe, uh, let's say, a minute long exposure, but I don't have an ND filter, you can take multiple pictures at a higher shutter speed, bring them into Photoshop, merge them to mm -hmm. fake a longer exposure shot yeah. as well. Right? Mm. If I remember correctly, use mean for that. If I remember correctly, sorry. If I remember correctly, use mean for that. But I haven't, I haven't done it in ages. Yeah, I've, I've you use mean. Yes, I've used yep. it a couple of times. Um, if you're going to do that, you get to try to be as steady as possible. If you have a tripod, use it. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to handhold it, then you get to try because you want to make sure that when you align them in Photoshop, there's not too much of a shift between the positions of the camera. Yeah, because auto align is only so accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tripod's still better for that. Even even if you're not doing the long exposure and you're doing like 100, 200, 300 shots and then using mean, you still want to have that as lined up as possible. Correct. Yeah. Live edit next week really yep. stuff <laughs> evans could do that i'll do the, the be like merging a, using the be like an edit it'll be like an edit an edit more off there we go yeah you never know so what okay. uh one of the things that a lot of people forget about when they're shooting sunrise sunset is uh, they forget to turn around <laughs> that's true Mm -hmm. And always turn around. Always, it, it can be helpful to turn around. You can get some some really interesting photos with the light. Yeah. You just get this uh, nice Trillium light Park. and glow. That's a Trillium Park. That was at a yeah. Get Out Shoot meetup. Yeah. So yeah, don't don't forget to turn around. Take in the whole scene, Key. not just Key. not just what's in front of you, but yeah. And what's yeah. there, there can be awesome stuff. Down. I think Andre did a drone shot recently too, where he turned the drone away from the sun. And, and got a great mm. photo out of it. Yeah, if I remember correctly, if I remember from seeing your feed recently. Oh, but, but yeah, yeah, turning around just goes a long way. So don't, don't forget to do, do that. The opposite. Don't be afraid to do yeah. the opposite. You know, uh, like this dude here. Like he just he just came into the frame, so I just used like the fern things just to frame him. He was out for a run. It was like sunset. So I'm like, okay, I'll use you, and then you know you get something instead of you know the shot wouldn't be as interesting if the guy wasn't there but don't be afraid to like use like just people in random like, in strangers frame. yeah just just try like just try to like try to tell a story right sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but try to have someone in your shot at least it tells a story and this guy's going for a run so it's okay. not a very interesting story but at least it's a this is a story I found random it. Strangers. Like, yeah see random like, strangers Strangers are that's, good. Well, just, that's just that's helps. using a 400 millimeter at, at sunrise, when everybody else was shooting the skyline. I saw these two guy, two people here, walk up and thought, "Oh, that would be an interesting photo with them in the skyline." And the light that's is just beautiful. So, exactly. 
take the time to look around people yeah like just pay attention like who's around you and like what's happening there's the shot yeah turn yeah, around yeah, yeah turn around look up i had more yeah. color behind me than at the actual sunset so i shot that thought it looked cool yeah it looks cool yeah so don't yeah. forget turn don't around get, yeah it can it can be beautiful in front of you but maybe something even better is going on behind you yeah so take the time to look Take the time. And um, let me share this one. This was an attempt at a sense rise that actually ended up failing. Uh, but I still like the image. I haven't edited it yet, but I oh, still yeah, like the was, image. Uh, <laughs> I think we, we, we went out yep. one early morning. We said we we're going to look for sunset, sunrise. We got there. Nothing happened. I remember but, that. Yep. Yeah. But I still got this shot. <laughs> Um, I have edited it, but I'm looking at editing it because I still like it. it. The sun may not rise, but the whole goal is get up early, go out late, try something. You never, you're not always going to get what you were looking for, but you may still end up getting something usable. Yep. No, 100%. About the discipline. That's sometimes, like, we all hate the uh, the clear sky, no oh, clouds yeah. in the yeah, sky. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, you don't want so, clear skies. Clear skies don't so, make for so, good photos. So when you've got a clear sky, you have to try and find find something to turn it into more of an image. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. This couple just worked it for us, man. Oh yeah. They had no clue. Yeah, that was they a great worked. morning. They worked it for us. So yeah, that's that's just okay, so it's a boring sky for a sunrise shot, but you're already there to shoot right. sunrise. So try and find a way yeah. instead of just taking a snapshot of the sky, which boring at that point you try and create an image yeah. to tell a story yep let's find some just, leading lines all yeah. the stuff no, just compose a shot that's, that's, that's the difference between a photo and a snapshot is is a little bit of thought right so yeah that's it would have I mean. been easy just to, to take a snapshot of the sun in the in the plain sky and oh there we go <laughs> Yeah, okay. that's boring. That's boring. <laughs> or you, you turn it into a whole story and image and you do something like this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And again, just take Let's the time it. to look around and switch up your lenses if you have to. Yeah. So here, yeah. this would not have worked with, with a wide angle lens, but nope. with a telephoto, all of a sudden you've got this great scene. And we've got some other stuff queued up here, so let's pop that up. When you Yeah, this is talking about no clouds in the sky or anything really interesting this is when i turn to these shots you know look down look the grasses use them you're to really frame. good at framing man you're thank really you good at framing the sun Jeez. thank you i do it a lot <laughs> yeah no I, I i like seeing my environment you know like brian we we get down you get low you see how these other things in nature can frame which people think ah it's just a sun sunset or sunrise i think it's beautiful um and then you pull off shot like this and people are like oh how'd you do that i'm like <laughs> create yeah creativeness <laughs> yep <laughs> another one there nice. oh, this is a 50 point so I'm that's big, a 50. like i don't know to me I, yeah it's a 50 and um I always try to get something in the foreground and there wasn't much at 50 to get something in the foreground, but there's a, there's a little stump here. So, you know, get low, get, get, get low to your subject to have that perspective. And, you know, the Toronto skyline is way in the distance. Right. But I mean, like to me, the skyline isn't really the focus point. I just want to focus on the, yeah. on the stump here. So because yeah. I had like the pebbles and everything to kind of create a little bit more texture, I didn't put the pebbles on there. They were just there. So I just kind of use it to my advantage, but, Look for something in the foreground to kind of give your uh, photo like a, little, like a little bit of scale too, and it makes your photo a little bit different instead of just shooting the skyline, which is in the background. So yeah. this is early, man. It's like six a.m. I guess like it was early. <laughs> was that the meetup we did there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, look. Went out every day one week trying to get a sunset, not a color in the sky. That's that's so true. Sometimes you just. You yeah, get way, nothing. I know. I know. I, I couldn't tell you how many times I came home with nothing. But when you, you do, game, that's how you got to keep going the next day. You got to yeah. be persistent. And the it's, next it's, day. Yeah. There's always another another sunrise, another sunset. Yeah. 
Um, this this spot, I've been going there for years, right? Mm. Once in the blue moon, I end up with a be- beautiful lit sky like that. <laughs> uh, sometimes you don't get nothing. So yeah. you just got to keep going. Um, in this shot, I think I combined a little bit of a long exposure shot and try to put myself in there and uh, stand still. Right? So <laughs> I had my I had my timer on. I think it was a was it a f- six to six to between six and ten second exposure. Um, put on my timer and I kind of position myself and try to hold myself as still as I can, uh, so I can have something kind of to give a kind of persistent depth in that right so nice. it's always try different stuff if if there's nothing interesting in your scene put yourself in there that's why you have a tripod that's why you have a countdown time on your cameras put yourself in there do something make it uh, interesting it's great it's a great action shot of you Evans. <laughs> that's that's what i call the photographer's pose every photographer <laughs> must have one of those shots <laughs> Man, it's mandatory it's mandatory um i, I don't have a drone think, but um, go ahead andrew i think before the time runs out we should put up our favorite sunrise or sunset shots that we have at the start, mm. at the start. Well, i've ahead, shared mine this. I've shared mine so if Brian can show it. Um, this is one of my favorites. So there we go. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> nice. We'll say we'll take a beach. Uh, I just got lucky. These two girls were way out in the water, and it just uh, the sun was coming down and uh, silhouetted silhouetted them out. And yeah, could be a could be a poster for like a movie. Thank you. So deep, deep, deep impact too. <laughs> as long Great as the photo. check clears, I don't care. <laughs> hey, I want ten percent of box office. So that's one of my favorites. So, uh, yeah. but you know, get out there and shoot. You're gonna have probably more bad days than good. But when you get a good one, it, it makes up for all the rest. So. Okay. So if we're going favorites, then I guess one of my favorites, it's, it's not my ultimate favorite because I have several of those, but this is one of my favorite sunset shots ever. Oh, how did Ooh. I know? Nice. <laughs> is that Peggy's Cove? That Peggy's. is Peggy's Cove. Nice. <laughs> Silhouetted puddle. Yeah. Nice. Jeez. Hashtag Canadiana. There you yep. go. Yep, that's. I've got several photos from this sunset. So does Andre because we were there together. And uh, another sunset that we were at Peggy's Cove for. They were both fantastic. Mm. Oh, yeah, we got so, lucky. So, sometimes you get lucky. That was one of those times. Yeah. It's Sweet just one of those lines up. Bucket, bucket list shots. You know, Peggy's Cove reflected in a puddle. And then you get this awesome sunset behind it, which just made it even more yeah awesome more special that, that's one of my favorites for sure just sells yeah. it yeah. um i don't think i have my favorite queued up but this is one of my favorites um and if you guys can notice we're Brandon talking Martin about Martin? i know where you yeah. are yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know exactly where that is. you didn't get how long, busted how, how long did you last before security kicked out you know the funny thing the security guy came by and then they said okay how many minutes? I just, oh, I just need a few minutes. I said, okay. So he went off, and then I got to shoot for another 30 minutes. <laughs> oh. But oh, that's the this is one of the situations too, right? where I was talking about in the beginning where I did not have um, I did not have the, uh, the CTO gel. gel. Yeah. And so most of the shots that I got this day, I really didn't like them. I like the sunset. I like the stuff. But the, the color wasn't right for my liking. Because I did not have the CTO to put on the on the subject, right? Uh, it's okay, but I'm not a big fan of it. I just love the sunset that night. No. <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> we have we had this one up already. Right? Oh yeah, this is. So this is I think. Mean, yeah, that's my photo. Um, I don't have a drone, but if you guys are ever know, full go to Ten- Canary Park for sunrise because. You're on a hill and that's the skyline in the distance but i don't want to talk about the skyline I just like when i was shooting this boat came by with with the uh i guess they're seagulls 
and they just mm -hmm. came through the frame. So I, like I started the show with timing. It's like just timing, right? This it just came through, and you just snap it and you just grab it. And if it's in focus, great. If it's not, well, you tried, right? But again, yeah. it's all timing. So excellent. So I think that uh, wraps up sunrise, sunset. Sunrise, sunset. Uh, leave ourselves a few minutes here. So we are planning to do a five dollar dollar store challenge. Five dollar Canadian. So, so five dollars. Like twenty bucks. Basically, through. you go to a dollar store. You've got five dollars. I'm not going to ask for receipts or anything. <laughs> but we're going to trust that you spend five dollars before well, tax. No. We'll know if before it's tax fine. that's your subject any props you want any lighting that you want uh, now you can use outdoors so you can use natural lighting if you want but and you can do it at night if you want you do anything like that that is equal to everybody so everybody's got access to nighttime everybody's got access to daytime that that's a creative choice that you have it's a natural light but if you want to use any indoor lighting then that comes out of your five dollars uh, your subject, your props, any effects you want. Just we want to see what you can do with five dollars at the dollar store. Hmm. There will be a prize. Uh, Is there a theme, for, or just anything you want to shoot? Anything you want to shoot. Anything. So you can you can buy some cheesy little cup and turn it into an amazing photo with five dollars. Trust me, it can be done. Hmm. So you're talking just, about you're talking about buying the subject item from the dollar store. You buy the subject item, like you buy any, or any tray or anything. Yep. Plus any props you want for your shot. Right, so, right, right, right. so can I can I use the five dollars to buy props for a portrait shoot? No. That's gonna <laughs> be a different <laughs> Well, if it's a self-portrait. Oh, oh whatever self is inside, okay. All right. Whatever is but, inside the image has to be part of that five dollar spend. Basically. Yeah. Okay, okay perfect. It. Got it. Jessica, if if you have horrible natural light in your house, you buy a sheet of parchment paper and you use it as a diffuser outside. Yeah. Then you can create nat nice natural light. Good tip. That's 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 tip. Uh, you can buy flashlights for really cheap at the dollar store. Candles. Use candles. Or just shoot closer to the window. Uh, yep. Let the window use light your window. be your feel. Yep. yep. Or just go outside at sunset and get that sweet sunset light to use as your light for your photo. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's we're, this is not going to be a week. We're going to give everybody a couple weeks uh, to to do this. Uh, we'll post all the details on Instagram tomorrow. But uh, basically, the next time I host the show, hopefully we'll have submissions from a bunch of people to show off and hopefully oh, get people on weeks. to talk about. Yes. Yeah. Two, two or three so weeks. You're saying. Two or three weeks. Yeah. Two or three weeks. Okay. So there's time for everybody to to give it a shot to go to a dollar store experiment and experiment mm -hmm. spend your yeah. five bucks you know you know the funny thing i was at henry's this afternoon and i was so tempted to grab each one of you uh a point and shoot film camera oh <laughs> that'll be fun <laughs> oh. i was just thinking about how are we going to develop it yeah that's the only challenge but that yeah. would be a fun challenge too yeah yeah let's we're, we're going to do some other challenges on this show uh People can be part of them in some, and some they'll just be challenges open to the guys in this show to show what we can do. But uh, for the five dollar right. challenge, we really want to yeah. see what everyone yeah. can do. We really want to see what you can create. Uh, we'll have an email address set up for you guys to submit your photos to because we it's really want to see what you come up with, and uh, we'll post them on Instagram and find a way to determine a winner. But basically we just want we want photos from all of you and we're going to produce our own as well none of us can win the contest so don't worry about that we're not going to give ourselves the prize like paul just posted in the comments here make sure you're following the open shutter instagram and uh, oh, with sorry, that, we'll go open up. shutter youtube sorry yeah i was wondering what do you mean right. by at open shutter ig because <laughs> i'm not the brightest person dude no, <laughs> you're just kind of dive there right now <laughs> All right, sorry, yep. I this. This, this will be on that. the Instagram feed for sure, Kim. It'll be on the yes. Instagram feed for sure yeah. coming tomorrow. So have fun with it. Have fun with yep. it. Be creative. There, there are no limits other than the five dollars. That that still leaves a lot of openings. So yep. play with it. So can, Can't wait can to see what you create. I'm gonna can be an use, hour in the goddamn dollar store can, now. It's like you use, ugh. 
Can you use sky replacement? <laughs> Can you use sky replacement? Need to get on Twitter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's happening on Twitter? What's up, happening on Twitter, man? <laughs> All the photographers are jumping to Twitter. That's what's happening yeah. on Twitter. Because <laughs> Instagram isn't a photo sharing platform anymore. But yeah. God help us. Anyway, open shutter uh, Twitter coming 2023. Open shutter yeah. Twitter. <laughs> 2023. No, I'm, just asking, I'm just asking, can, it, can we use like sky replacement? Like, can we use any post processing? Uh, I, uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. As long as you're not compositing in like elephants and stuff like that. No. Yeah, okay. Because you're not getting those for five bucks. So, right. no. Right. Let's put it this way if it's free in Photoshop, you can use it. Hmm. But if you have to grab a sky from somewhere else, then it costs money. Right, right. Unless right. you shot it. But just, right. just create something cool, people. Yeah. yeah. Try and keep it to $5. There's lots of options. The dollar store has a lot of stuff. Anyway, a quick round of final thoughts, Paul. <laughs> uh, I'm just Googling the $5 challenges on Google. <laughs> <laughs> Man, there's some of this. Also, Pinterest, too, is actually a good, a good place to get ideas. Anyway, um, or yeah, thanks for so keeping on. Hopefully you, got, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, show. Uh, shout out to Brian for uh, directing, producing, hosting, because it's not easy, not easy to do to talk and direct at the same time. So... Uh, Shout out to Brian. Make sure you follow these dudes' uh, channels, Instagrams, everything. And uh, we'll see you next all week. All the links are below. Links Andre, are below. final thoughts? Just uh, get out there. Get out there, have fun, shoot. Uh, but when you actually shoot a sunrise or a sunset, take your shot and then stand there for five minutes. Just do that for yourself. Take it in up here, you know, and just enjoy it. That's why you're there. Uh, yeah, go shoot, have fun. Have fun. Break, break some All right, guys. Thank you for spending your Wednesday evening with us as usual. Uh, get out there and shoot. Have fun. Um, sometimes, you know, we are too much worried about the technical aspects of our photography and how good it looks that we are not even enjoying what we are doing, right? Uh, go out there, shoot, have fun, enjoy it. Don't worry too much about whether it's perfect or not. The whole goal is to keep shooting, learn from shot to shot, and improve your 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 skill. So, go out there, have fun. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, give this video a thumbs up. All right, oh, yeah, and with that, uh, thank you everybody for watching. Appreciate it, everyone. And uh, again, I'll mention it again. Everybody here's got a YouTube channel, so check everybody out. We've all got different things we do. Can't wait to see what everybody sends in for the five dollar challenge. I'm excited. We'll post it up on Instagram tomorrow, and uh, between us, we'll come up with a prize uh, that we can send to uh, whoever wins. Andre's drone. Andre's drone. Shipping's no. too much. Shipping's too expensive on Andre's drone. Oh. We're not sending no, we're Andre's gonna, drone. We're gonna fly the drone. We're gonna fly the, <laughs> the drone. cowboy. <laughs> the cowboy's not going anywhere. Uh, anyway, All right, guys. Time. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Have a great night, and uh, Thanks, we'll see you next Good week night, on guys. Uh, one of the other channels here. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. Peace. Good night. Peace.